The Wheel of Time showrunner explains all the big changes in season two's finale. All the questions, you answer now. Season two of The Wheel of Time has ended with a big battle in Falm and the death of one of the Forsaken. While the season ended with some classic events from the Wheel of Time book series, it also had some, well, big deviations from the source material. Now, to understand why the show changed what it did, we talked to Raph Judkins about some of the biggest changes in the finale. Now, this was an audio-only interview, so we'll be summarizing the answers in this video. So, perhaps the most divisive character arc this season involved Matt, who was stuck in this spiral of self-loathing that continued basically all the way up to his blowing of the Horn of Valir. We asked Raph what the show was trying to do with Matt this season and how he felt it came off. Raph said, One thing that was important to us with Matt this season was really showing, and with all the characters, showing the core character trait that they'll display through the entire book series. And I think for Matt, that's being a hero, but not believing you are. And so for him, he's obviously at a big low because of leaving everyone at the end of last season. And then we pull him back into the show. It was really important for us to be able to see those doubts that he has about himself because that's just as important to his character as the fact that he delivers when he really needs to. And so I'm really happy with how it came out. I still get emotional when I watch the Heroes of the Horn moment with him. We wanted to feel like blowing the horn of Valir, which is one of the iconic moments that Matt has throughout the entire book series, is tied very fully to this core character trait of his. And that you're getting an emotional payoff when he blows the Horn of Valir as well, as well as just a plot payoff. And so that's what we really tried to set up with his, he's very down on himself at the beginning of the season over his actions that he took in last season. And then with Ishamael and what Leandrin does with him, everyone is pushing him towards the dark essentially and saying, wouldn't it just be easier to pick up the dagger? Wouldn't it just be easier? And to see him really step up and accept who that that's a part of him. It's a part of him that he wants to touch the dagger, but he's able not to do it when he needs to and then get there. And in the final moment, when he thinks he's going to die at the hands of the Shan Chen and is able to blow the horn of Valir, he is able to realize that he is a hero, even though he thinks that he's not. We also asked about the decision to have Perrin kill Jeffrom Bornhold in revenge for Hopper's death. While Hopper died in the books, actually uh, earlier in the series, Perrin's killing of Bornhold sets up a much more personal stake in the next season and beyond. Raph said, Perrin, in the books, he has a great deal of guilt for the two white cloaks that he kills in the first book, who, again, those white cloaks killed Hopper. And that's a huge thing that he deals with in the books. It's like him coming to grips with violence and what it means to do violence. Also in the books, he's accused of killing Jeff from Bornhold, and he feels guilty about it because he has committed violence in the past. And it just felt like for, in terms of streamlining stories, that to be able to bring those two stories together in this moment could give a lot more emotional impact than it being random white cloaks that he kills. It is someone that we know, and it's someone that we identify with, with being good, that being uh, Jeffrom, uh, even though he's killed Hopper, which makes him evil incarnate to the audience. So Bornhold is also justified in what he's doing from his perspective. So I think it gives Perrin quite a complex emotional state for what he has to deal with with the White Cloaks moving forward and what goes on in the Two Rivers in future books. When Dane Bornhold tries to get his revenge on Perrin for killing his father, it brings all of those things to a very fine emotional point, made even stronger by him uh, killing, by Perrin killing Bornhold. So I'm really happy with that decision because I think it brings a little bit more clarity to parents' arc around violence, which is important for us in condensing things. And finally, we also asked about the big changes to the battle between Rand and Ishamel and Falm, which was, you know, in the books, broadcast in the sky and also involved a whole heck of a lot more swordplay. So Raf said, in the books, there's this idea of a battle in the sky above Falm, and we really did want to achieve that in the show. But we're also at a place now where we've seen a lot of battles in the sky, in Marvel movies and DC movies, and you see a lot of people smashing away at each other in CG clouds, and I think that could 
just really have a different connotation now than it might have when the books were written. And so we wanted to really achieve a battle in the sky above Falm, but by doing it on this tower, it lets us make it feel more real. It lets us do it more practically, which is always important. The more that we can do practically and not just with VFX, the better for us. And for Rand, I think what was important to us with his journey with the sword is that it's a story that we're signaling very clearly that we intend to do by the scene with Lan in episode 7 where he recognizes that Rand has learned a little something about the sword. So that's the beginning of Rand's story with the sword, which is, you know, good news for all of us people who thought that Rand's sword skills were getting overlooked in the series. Raf continues, I think that's something that's important to us and that this season was very much about him going to Loghain, of him being afraid of the power that he wields, and of him pushing away the people that he cares about the most, which are the themes that Rand is up against in book two of the books. He really does try to push away his friends and drive Matt away from him, drive Perrin away from him, and drive Loyal away from him, and then realize that they're actually stronger together, which is uh, a recurring theme in the books for Rand too. And so that was why we brought all the characters together in this final set piece, so you can truly have that feeling of these are characters that we've separated all the season, and now here they are together. So what did you think about the finale? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.